So um, there's basically two forms of human trafficking in this country, labor trafficking and sex trafficking. So we think about human trafficking, we call it a form of modern day slavery. The, it's not really any different from historical slavery because these are people who are trapped in a situation and do not have the freedom to leave. The difference with historical slavery is that historical slavery was based on race and ethnicity and modern day slavery is based on vulnerabilities. Now we know young people are vulnerable simply because they're young. Um, the definition of sex trafficking according to the federal laws, which also uh, our Kansas laws uh, duplicate, a commercial sex act that is induced by force, fraud, or coercion, or in which the person induced is, to is induced to perform an act is under the age of 18. And that's because children cannot legally consent to sex. So force, fraud, and coercion are not required. That means that when we talk about child prostitutes, there's no such thing. Children cannot consent to sex. Therefore, they cannot consent to prostitution. In our country, experts believe at least 100,000 US children are being trafficked for sex every year. Some experts believe it's closer to 300,000. In June, I was at a conference in Texas, and Texas found 90,000 children in Texas alone who were being used for commercial sex. So I think the number's closer to 300,000. And the, the average age of entry into prostitution is 12 to 14 years old. So every time I read the Topeka Capital Journal and I see those, art, those comments on the, under the articles that say, well, this is sex between two consenting adults. Who cares? Don't the police have something better to do? No, because the truth is it's most likely that the person in prostitution is a child or was a child when they were first prostituted. So 12 to 14 years old is the average age of entry into prostitution. That's quite stunning. Who are these victims? Well, they're US citizens, and they're foreign nationals, and they're male, and they're female. They're, they're vulnerable simply because they're young. They come from all different backgrounds. Runaways are particularly high risk. And we know this because uh, one in three runaways is approached by a pimp or a john within 48 hours of running away. These guys, these traffickers, they're at the bus stops, they're at the train stations, they're looking for our kids. They're looking for the kid that feels, looks isolated, that doesn't know where they're going. And they pretend to be a friend often. They'll say, do you know where you're going? Can I buy you a burger? Do you need a place to stay tonight? And the kid gets trapped because what do you know how to do at 13? What do you know how to do at 14 years old? And if you're running away, it's often for a reason. So we found that a large number of children are in the care of foster, uh, foster families or some kind of social services. Um, but just because a kid is in social services or in the juvenile system, doesn't mean that your kids are safe. There's lots of kids, middle class kids, who have been stolen from us by traffickers um, simply because they're used, because they're vulnerable, because it's not necessarily what you do or don't do, it's how that child feels. So if a, feel, a child doesn't feel loved, they become vulnerable to traffickers. Some experts believe that only 25% of runaways are even reported missing. And why might that be? Well, all right, I'm an honest person. Crappy parents, right? There's just some crappy parents out there. I say let everybody drive, but have a, drive, a license to have kids, right? Take a test. <laughs> so you at least have some basic knowledge of how to raise another human being. But also, we have a lot of busy parents, parents who work two jobs, single parents, uh, grandparents who are trying to take care of younger kids for a lot of complicated reasons. 
Um, but that, the fact that those kids are unsupervised makes them vulnerable in a lot of different ways. And they're vulnerable to traffickers. Traffickers are smart. They're con artists, right? They are going after the money. So what they do is they go along, they go to the mall, and they're looking, wherever kids are, that's where they go. But let's say the mall, because I loved to go to the mall when I was a child. And they'll go to the food court, and they'll be like, hey, you have beautiful eyes. And the person goes, thanks. And they're like, that's not the one. Wow, you've got gorgeous eyes. Thanks, dude. That's not the one. Wowza, you have beautiful eyes. <laughs> God, oh my gosh. Thanks. No, I don't. <laughs> that's the one. Because that's the one that wants my attention. That's the one that lacks confidence in themselves. That's the one who needs me and that I can draw in and pull into my web. And so these Romeo pimps, we call them. The Romeo pimps will draw our kids in, make them think that this is their boyfriend, that they love them, and they'll sell them this dream of the life they're going to have together, a life with cars and jewelry and a beautiful home and a particular kind of bed and a carpet. I, I hear these dreams all the time, but honey, I just need you to do this one thing for me. I just need you to do this so we can have all our dreams come together. All our dreams can come true if you'll just do this thing for us. And so they trick these kids into believing that they love them. They con them. And then they sell them over and over. So if, if the quota is only five customers a night or 500 to thousand dollars, that's 1,820 paid rapes a year. It's bad enough to be sexually assaulted by your father, your brother, your uncle, the stepdad. But imagine five, ten people every day abusing you and raping you. That changes a child. It changes them. It consumes their soul. Because they think there's something wrong with them, that this would happen to them. Because that's the way kids think, right? In the old days, we used to say, if I rape a child, I'm going to jail, right? If I throw $100 on the dresser, she's going to jail. Now, slowly that's changing. Law enforcement is being trained, and they're beginning to understand this crime differently. But we still have that stigma around prostitution, right? The stigma that these are throwaway people that they're people who love sex, who want to be there, who just want the money. But that's not true. This is a mugshot's taken over 12 to 18 months. You look at this child and you tell me when the lights go out of her soul. You tell me when she loses her sense of self. 12 to 18 months. And you can see the effect of what it takes to keep a child in slavery like this. Right? What does it take to make a child have sex with 10 men a day? It takes abuse. It takes violence. It takes threats. Right? Because who here wants to have sex 10 times with somebody you love, much less 10 times with somebody you don't even know? And now y'all are all grown folks, so I can say this to y'all. They don't look like Richard Gere. Right? Okay, that's a pretty woman reference for those of you who are, you know, like 12. <laughs> so who are the traffickers? Traffickers can be anybody, all right? They can be U.S. nationals. There's a lot of gangs and, and organized crime getting into trafficking. Because actually, human trafficking is in the top two most lucrative crimes in the world right now. They think that it's at least a $32 billion industry. So the first is drugs, second, humans, third, weapons. Why? Because if I have a drug and I sell it to you, I have to go get more drugs. But if I have a child, I can sell it to every single person in this room over and over and over. 
So it's very lucrative. And the risks have been low in the past, right? There's been very little cost. We're not even going after traffickers. Heck, in the old days, if a law enforcement came up on somebody, a, a, a man and a, and a girl, for example, having sex, they'd be like, go home. Don't you know where she's been? Go home to your family. When really, it's the child, it's the person who's being prostituted, who is the victim, but we've treated them like criminals. Many experts believe that 90 to 99% of people in prostitution, children and adults, are under pimp control. And what that means is traffickers take all the money. They don't have a choice to be there. And if you don't think it's slavery, look at this. This is, I did not write this. I can spell much better than this. But this is one of the primary rules of pimping. You'll find it over and over and over when traffickers write about their process. Own them mind, body, and soul. Own them mind, body, and soul. They want to own our children. Mind, body, and soul. They do it because there's money in, for, in it for them. It's a crime of greed for them, right? If there was no money in it, if there was no demand, they'd go find something else to sell. Because it's not about what they sell, it's about making money. So what drives this? Buyers, sex buyers drive this crime. It's the 10 to 20% of men in our community in the US that buy sex that drive this crime. And I want to tell you that some of them know that they're buying children and they just don't care. They just don't care. Because for them, it's all about their sexual gratification. They feel entitled to it. Uh, there's been multiple stings where law enforcement has done, a lot of this is conducted on the internet now, and it's even in our community. Um, so when they do stings on the internet, the, the undercover officer will say, well, I'm only 15, does that matter to you? And the, tr the John always says, or the sex buyer always says, doesn't matter to me if it doesn't matter to you. And so they, they keep asking them, and they'll go back and they'll say, when they get to the door, they'll say, no, I'm only 15, are you sure it doesn't matter? And the John always says, it doesn't matter to me. They know and they don't care. And that's because they don't see these women and children as human beings. They have dehumanized these folks to the point that they feel like they can do anything to them. And in fact, many times they talk about it in terms of, it's like a cup of coffee. When I'm done, I just throw it away. Does that sound like anybody else to you? Anybody remember the BTK? Um, trial, and what he talked about is like, when I'm done with the tissue, I throw it away. It's an it, right? And that's the way many Johns talk about our kids. Even when you meet a person who's maybe an adult and in prostitution, the majority of time, they started out as children. And they've grown up and they have nothing else, no other skills. So, we have to understand prostitution as a crime of violence against women and children, right? Some men buy women and children so they can abuse them, so they can do things to them that they can't do to real women. As if the person that they're using for their own sexual gratification is not real. As if the person they're abusing and choking and gang raping is not a real person. We have to change that attitude. So how do we stop this? How do we change it? Well, the first thing we have to do is address patriarchy. We're all products of patriarchy, right? We all grew up in a patriarchal culture. But we have to change the to toxic masculinity that grows along, goes along with that, that says that some people are entitled to some things and other people are not, that some people get to be human pe beings and other people are less than human. We have to reject that hierarchy. And we have to 
teach men and boys that it's okay to be fully human. What toxic masculinity does is it takes a men's full humanity from them. When we tell boys, boys don't cry, we're telling them they're not allowed to be fully human. Boys, you get to cry. Men, you can cry. You're a human being, and that's what human beings do. We need to focus on positive self-esteem and healthy body image, that your body belongs to you. Do not make Sandra go hug Aunt Betty Jo if Sandra doesn't want to hug, hug Aunt Betty Jo. Because when you make that child go hug Aunt Betty Jo, you're saying that that child's comfort doesn't matter, that they're not entitled to their own body, and that somebody else's pleasure is more important than their own sense of self. So don't make them hug Aunt Betty Jo. Thanksgiving's coming up. Healthy relationships. Many of us did not grow up knowing how to ha have a healthy relationship. So we have to learn that. It's OK. It's OK that you didn't know how to do that. But you're adults now, so you can learn how to do that and teach your kids. Consistent relationships with healthy adults who demonstrate they care about a child without wanting anything from that child. So it doesn't matter. It could be your, your kid's best friend. It could be a teacher. It could be a, the church lady. Any adult who cares about a kid consistently cares about them and doesn't want anything back from that child, that makes a difference. When I talk to survivors, they talk about that one person who believed in them that one person who saw them and helped them survive, even if the person didn't know what they were going through, that that one person saw them and loved them was really important. Talk about popular culture and the way that it represents sexuality is the most important thing about us, right? It used to be that we cared about your character, how you treated other people, who you are, how you are in this world. But now popular culture is telling us that what's important is our bodies, our physicality, how we look, our sexuality. But that's the least important thing about us, right? And we got to teach our kids that. Deconstruct the glorification of pimp culture. I never want to see another pimp and hoe party. I never want to see another pimp your ride, pimp my pumpkin. Halloween just passed, right? Because what we're doing is we're glorifying the traffickers, the ones who are violent, the people who are selling, the criminals who are selling human beings. Don't glorify that. Just because they have a bunch of stuff and a lot of money doesn't mean that they're important. Let's do away with that idea of materialism as being a showing value of a human being. We also need to get better at understanding social media and online gaming. Uh, as I get older, I find it more and more difficult to keep up with technology, and you might as well. Um, they are so good at using technology to get to our kids. Also, keep your kids in healthy activities, the arts. Uh, Faith-based organizations, student organizations, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, that's all good. It keeps them busy and keeps them safe from the traffickers. And then counseling as appropriate and ensuring that youth in poverty have the things they need. Because it's really difficult when you don't have something to eat today to see other people having so much. So we can create a huge change in our culture just by doing these simple things. Finally, I want to remind you that the average age of entry into prostitution is 12 to 14 years old. And I leave you with this picture of my 12-year-old self, just because I want you to know that this is what 12-year-old looks like. Thank you very much.